hello friends and welcome back to CEC live lectures and in the previous lecture we were discussing about the tannins and in that we discussed the definition of tannins, different types of definition, how the definition of tannin were evolved with the passage of time and uh, then we discussed about the distribution of tannins in the plant kingdom and uh, within the plant how the tannins are present in different parts of uh, the plant. Then uh, we discuss about their properties depending upon uh, their uh, structure, different chemical properties we also discuss and their physical appearance. Then we discussed about the uh, classification of tannins which, are, which were largely based upon uh, their chemical composition and we discussed that the tannins are broadly categorized into hydrolyzable, uh, non-hydrolyzable, pseudo tannins and uh, condensed or the complex tannins. Sorry. So, these uh, hydrolyzable tannins were further categorized into gallotannins and elagitannins and the gallotannins were those which were, uh, which on hydrolysis they give rise to gallic acid unit and these uh, overall hydrolyzable tannins if we look into their core structure they have a central sugar molecules and uh, this sugar molecule uh, having 6 or 5 hydroxyl groups. These hydroxyl groups form bonds with, with the gallic acid units in a dipsidical uh, uh, manner or the ester uh, linkages were there between the gallic acid molecule and the sugar molecules and then we discussed that a hydrolyzable tannin or a, to be considered as a tannin should have at least three hydroxyl groups esterified with the gallic acid that is three hydroxyl groups of the sugar molecule must be esterified with the gallic acid unit in, or, in order to consider that molecule as a tannin. Then we discussed that about elagitannins, that how these elagitannins are further classified into uh, hexahydroxydiphenic acid type as well as dehydro uh, uh, hexahydroxydiphenic acid types. <coughs> Why these are known as elagic acid elagitannins? Because these elagitannins on hydrolysis give rise to hexahydroxydiphenic acid molecule, which undergo lactonization and give rise to elagic acid. We also discuss about the different classes of uh, um, hydrolyzable uh, gallotannins as well as elagitannins. Then we discuss about the non-hydrolyzable or the condensed tannin which are normally considered as the uh, oligomers or polymers of flavin 3 ol molecules and since these are the polymers of flavin 3 ol molecules which, which are also known as proanthocyanidins. Now and when they undergo dry distillation they give rise to catechol and therefore these are also known as catechol tannins, but catechol tannin is a less prevalent uh, term in comparison to the condensed tannins or proanthocyanidins. Now, as we discussed that uh, these non-hydrolyzable tannins, if they are having uh, 2 to 10 catechin units or apicatechin units, they are also known as flavolins so, because these have flavin 3 ol molecules. Catechins and apicatechins are nothing but flavin 3 ol molecules and therefore, these are known as flavolins. Now, since lot of hydroxyl groups are present on uh, their structure, whether it is uh, uh, a catechin structure or epicatechin structure or their polymer, because whenever they undergo polymerization, they will have numerous uh, hydroxyl group in their structures. And these hydroxyl groups will have further substitutions, one point. Second is that these uh, monomers of uh, flavin 3 ol molecules, whether it is a catechin or epicatechin, they are attached to each other through different positions. And these different positions of linkages as well as different substitutions on the hydroxyl groups provide large structural variability to these uh, condensed tannins. And uh, because they have large structural diversity, they have different properties and different uses and therefore condensed tannins have far more uh, uh, important or wide commercial usage in comparison to the hydrolyzable tannins. Now, whenever these uh, uh, condensed tannins, they are treated with strong acids or strong enzymes, these get converted into uh, a red colored insoluble material which is known as flobafine. And these flobafines or the red colored compounds, they are responsible for, for the red color or red brownish color of certain drugs like bark is there, then uh, cinnamon is there 
then uh, the another bark is uh, quebraco tree bark is there or you can see the whole uh, uh, central or the heartwood portion of uh, the tree is reddish brown in color or red in color which is mainly due to phlobophenes now these are the examples of uh, certain plants which we discussed that is uh, cinnamon cranberries and tea tea is a rich source of catechins and that is why it is known that lot of flavin 3 old derivatives are present in tea now we move on to the next class of the tannins that is complex tannins and uh, this term complex tannin was given by okuda and uh, these are nothing but these are the uh, mixture of uh, the gallic acid or galloil tannins or gallo tannins along with the condensed tannins now we know that gallo tannins are nothing but these are the hydrolyzable tannins whereas the flavin 3 ol or the condensed tannins are the non hydrolyzable tannins so in other words you can say that complex tannins are formed by the mixture of hydrolyzable as well as non hydrolyzable or the condensed uh, non hydrolyzable or condensed tannins now in these complex tannins gallic acid unit is attached to the catechin unit through a glycosidic linkage and therefore these are also known as flavogalenoyl unit or flavogalenoyl tannins or structures now first carbon of the glucose unit is linked to the sixth carbon or the eighth carbon of the flavin 3 ol unit so this is how the glycosid glycosidic linkage is formed between uh, between the hydrolyzable tannin and the condensed tannin so first carbon of the glucose forms a bond with the sixth or the eighth carbon of flavin 3 ol uh, unit of the condensed tannin to form a complex tannin though these complex tannins uh, are found in nature but they have a very limited distribution and they are largely found in the members of uh, members belonging to family fagaceae or myrtaceae or thiaceae thiaceae sorry <coughs> next class is of the pseudo tannins and uh, pseudo tannins are nothing but these are the low molecular weight compounds so as we discussed previously that uh, the tannins should have a specific molecular weight in order to consider them as tannin because if the molecular weight of uh, of a particular compound is below that specified limit obviously the structure of that particular compound will be small though it will enter into the um, empty amorphous spaces of the um, uh, amorphous collagen fiber but still it will not be able to form cross linking uh, with those uh, collagen fibers and since it will not be able to form those cross linkages between uh, the collagen fibers it will not be able to convert the uh, the animal skin into leather though they have a uh, 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 they are polyphenolic in nature they they have numerous hydroxyl group in their structure they and sometimes they give uh, a specific test of tannins also therefore these are considered as pseudo tannins because they do not exhibit true property of a tannin and the most common examples of uh, these pseudo tannins are gallic acid chlorogenic acid or uh, single molecule of catechin now these these type of malic, uh, uh, molecules specifically gallic acid or chlorogenic acid these are ubiquitous in nature and you will find these molecules in numerous plants but still all those plants do not have a, a tendency to convert uh, the animal skin into leather and that is why they they are not considered as tannin rich plants because of the smaller molecular weight and the smaller size of these molecules now we move on to the uh, extraction aspect of uh, the tannins and uh, as we have discussed till now that tannins are the polyphenolic compounds and since they are polyphenolic they have numerous hydroxyl groups on their structure and because of these hydroxyl groups as we discussed in the properties they become highly polar compounds and since they are highly polar they are more soluble in water or hydroalcoholic solutions or acetone or simply ethanol or methanol so in order to extract out the tannins from the plant the uh, the powdered plant material is extracted with either with water or hydroalcoholic acetone or ethanol or methanol now to prepare that extract various extraction techniques can be used like maceration reflux or succinate which are considered as uh, 
um, as the traditional extraction techniques. Vis-a-vis, you can also use certain modern extraction techniques like supercritical fluid extraction, uh, microwave assisted extraction or infrared uh, assisted extraction. You can al also extract tannin using ionic liquids or pressurized hot water extraction procedures or enzyme assisted extraction wherein specific enzymes are used which basically hydrolyze the cell walls of, uh, of that plant material and they release the cellular content into the solvent thereby improving the overall extraction yield. So, tannins can be extracted obviously by both traditional extraction techniques as well as the modern extraction techniques. Now, once the extract is prepared, this extract can be further treated with low polarity solvents in order to remove various kinds of impurities uh, such as uh, pigments are there, uh, lipid molecules are there or waxes are there and if they are present in the plant. So, what to do is you take the alcoholic extract or the aqueous extract that you have prepared by using different extraction techniques, then you uh, partition that extract with a low polarity solvent like hexane or petroleum ether or even diethyl ether in order to remove the uh, low polarity impurities. So, once the partitioning is completed, you are left with an uh, uh, organic solvent extract which could be petroleum ether, hexane or diethyl ether or and you are le uh, left with the aqueous extract. So, the uh, organic solvent extract is discarded whereas, the aqueous extract is further processed in order to further purify the tannin compounds. Now, the further purification of the tannin compounds is largely done by using different chromatographic techniques like column chromatography or preparative uh, uh, HPLC or you can use centrifugally assisted uh, chromatography and so on and so forth. So, they are largely purified by using these chromatographic techniques and once uh, further purification of uh, these compounds uh, is done by these chromatographic techniques, one can easily precipitate out tannins from from the uh, uh, from <coughs> the purified fractions that are obtained from the uh, chromatographic technique. So, this is how basically you you go for the extraction of uh, tannins from the plant matrix. Now, there are different parameters that have shown uh, the effect of uh, on the extraction yield of tannins such as particle size of the plant material which you are using to extract uh, the tannins. Larger the particle size, lesser will be the extraction efficiency because we know that as the particle size decreases, the surface area increases and uh, the particles get more chance to get interact with uh, the solvent thereby increasing the extraction yield. Now, the particle size, uh, uh, the increase in the extraction yield with the decrease in the particle size occurs up to a particular extent and if the particle size are further uh, decreased or beyond that particular limit, they start to form uh, uh, certain uh, I will say lumps during the extraction and these lumps basically prevent the entrance of the solvent or interaction of the solvent with the remaining particles thereby decreasing the overall extraction yield. So, particle size in, is important and the particle size should decrease up to a particular limit. Then temperature and pressure, we all know that with the increase in temperature and pressure, we, the extraction efficiency um, increases many folds, but again the temperature has to be uh, up to a certain level to avoid any kind of thermal degradation, whereas high pressure basically helps in the penetration of the solvent into the plant matrix, vis a vis it also helps uh, in keeping the solvent in liquid form at higher temperatures. So, both these parameters if they are uh, balanced beautifully, they can have a very good impact on the overall extraction yield of the extract. Then obviously, time and the type of the solvent. As tannins are highly polar solvents, you, you always require certain polar solvents to extract these tannins. So, if you, are, you, if you want to try uh, to extract the tannins by using low polarity solvents like hexane or petroleum ether or diethyl ether or even chloroform, then you will not be able to extract out tannins. So, by understanding the chemical nature of the compounds, you can always select a suitable solvent for extraction that particular uh, desired secondary metabolite or the compounds. Then type of the plant material. If the plant material is hard enough, then obviously all those parameters above particle size has to be decreased, temperature and pressure has to be increased, vis a vis time of the extraction has to be increased because it will take longer duration for the sol by the solvent to penetrate into the hard material. Whereas, if the plant material is soft enough, so extraction time will be less. 
then uh, solid to solvent ratio that is the uh, ratio of the plant material to the solvent say for example you are extracting 5 gram of the plant material with 10 ml of the solvent you you say you get 500 mg of the extract vis a vis if you are extracting 5 gram of the solid with say 25 ml of the solvent you may get 750 grams uh, milligram of the extract so by increasing the solvent volume obviously there is a increase in the uh, extraction yield but again up to a certain extent after which any increase in the solvent volume will not show any effect on the extraction yield so that this is how basically by by balancing all those parameters by understanding the chemical nature of the compounds you want to isolate or extract from the plant material you you select the solvent you select the extraction technique you select uh, uh, you select the solvent to uh, solid ratio or uh, solvent to the plant material ratio so this is how you go for the extraction of the tannins from the plant matrix now coming on to the chemical test now what are the chemical tests that can be utilized to uh, detect the presence or absence of the tannins in the given plant material or or the plant sample now there are uh, three specific uh, test i will say gold beater skin test gelatin or gelatin salt test and match sick test now gold beater skin test is the test that is being utilized to differentiate between the true or the or the complex tannins from the uh, i will say pseudo tannins because pseudo tannins are again have tannin like properties but they are not considered as tannins because of their low molecular weight which we have already discussed so one can easily differentiate between the pseudo tannins and the true tannins which which are comprised of uh, hydrolyzable tannins or condensed tannins and complex tannins so we can differentiate these three categories of true tannins from the pseudo tannins with the help of gold beater skin test now in this test we we take a a piece of uh, uh, intestine from the ox and we treat that uh, intestinal piece with the uh, uh, 2% hcl solution say for 5 to 10 minutes after that we wash that piece of the skin with the distilled water and dip that uh, piece into the um, solution of the test sample or the extract after 10 minutes we remove the uh, piece of the ox uh, ox intestine and then again wash it with distilled water and treat it with 1% paracelphate solution so if the plant material or the extract contains true tannins black brown spots will appear on the intestine skin that will indicate the presence of true tannins and pseudo tannins since they have a smaller uh, molecular size or molecular weight they will not be able to form uh, cross linking within the uh, collagen fibers and they will not be able to give the blue black, black color on the skin and this is how you can differentiate between a true and a pseudo tannin next is the gelatin or gelatin salt test in this uh, since gelatin is a protein and uh, tannins have a tendency to precipitate with Uh, proteins so what we do is we we take uh, the alcoholic or the aqueous extract of uh, the plant material and to that alcoholic or the aqueous extract we add 1% gelatin solution and to this we add 10% nacl solution also in order to prevent uh, false positive precipitation by certain other molecules that may react with gelatin that is why it is also known as gelatin salt test so once all these uh, uh, mixtures are uh, um, uh, all these uh, solutions are mixed that is the solution of the plant extract uh, gelatin solution as well as 10% sodium chloride if you get buff colored heavy white uh, buff colored or uh, heavy white precipitates that will indicate the positive test for tannins now the third test is the match stick test now this test is specific for catechins because whenever catechins are uh, treated with uh, hydrochloric acid or any acid they get converted into fluoroglucinol and we know that fluoroglucinol on reaction with lignin give rise to pink color and that is why it is known as a match stick test because a match stick is being used now what is done is a match stick is dipped in uh, the tannin solution and it is uh, heated along with the Uh, uh, hydrochloric acid solution so when the uh, catechins that are present in the tannin solution they react with or they are heated with hcl they get converted into fluoroglucinol 
and this fluoroglucinol that is produced after this reaction immediately reacts with the lignin that is present in the matchstick and it will give you the pink color and this is how you can detect the presence of the uh, condensed tannins in a given plant material. Now apart from uh, these tests there is a very common test which is largely used for uh, uh, I will say uh, uh, hydrolyzable tannins <coughs> that is ferric chloride test and uh, when this uh, when to the extract of the plant material whether it is aqueous or alcoholic we add a ferric chloride solution then if you get a blue black color that indicates the presence of hydrolyzable tannins and if you get a uh, bluish green or darkish uh, dark uh, greenish shade color then it indicates the presence of condensed tannins. So, these are uh, the few tests that are being utilized to check the presence or absence of tannins in a given plant material. Now, we move on to the last uh, aspect of uh, this lecture that is the uses of tannins and uh, the uses can be broadly categorized into the pharmaceutical or medicinal uses of uh, these tannins as well as the commercial or the non-pharmaceutical uses of uh, uh, tannins. So, amongst uh, medicinal uses, these compounds since they have large structural diversity, they have shown numerous uh, biological activities and worth mentioning are the anti-cancer and HIV activities. Various tannins, specifically condensed tannins, they have shown uh, anti-cancer and anti-HIV properties and anti-cancer is largely uh, shown due to their significant antioxidant uh, potential. Now, uh, we all know that uh, astringent, uh, astringents are basically used to uh, tightening of the skin, to tighten up the skin or for the wound healing. Whenever there is a cut or bruise on the skin, we tend to apply an astringent substance because it causes the precipitation of the protein in that particular area, thereby stop the, stop the bleeding and it helps in formation of the uh, interlinking linking between these protein molecules where cut has been made and that is why they are uh, having a property of wound healing. So, this is an, uh, another important medicinal uses, uh, use of uh, these tannin compounds and again because of their astringent action they are largely used to treat uh, ulcers specifically ulcers of gastrointestinal tract and hence they have shown anti-ulcer activity. And besides these, uh, these tannins are also being uh, used for their anti-inflammatory properties, antibacterial and specifically in urinary, urinary tract infections. Now, their antibacterial or I will say antimicrobial activity is of uh, importance because uh, the plants that are producing tannins, these uh, tannins help the uh, plants to protect them against various uh, pest infections or the microbial attack on the plant. So, whenever there is a microbial attack or the fungal or a bacterial attack on the plant, the uh, tannin containing uh, plants, they start producing more tannins at the site of infection, they are start transporting tannins to the site of action, uh, to the site of infection, thereby protecting the, the whole plant from that particular infection that can be caused by certain kind of bacteria or fungus. Now, we move on to the non-pharmaceutical or the industrial uses of these tannins. Now, as we have discussed that tannins are the compounds that are largely used to uh, convert animal skin into leather. So, they have uh, a, a large or I will say potential use in leather industry because they, they convert the skin into leather. Apart from conversion of skin into leather, they also protect the animal skin from putrefication because of their strong antibacterial or antimicrobial action. They protect the, the skin from any kind of bacterial or fungal infection. Then they are also used in preserving fish nets. Now, fish nets are normally dipped in, in the tannin solution that helps in protecting those nets from different kinds of bacterial or the fungal damages that can be done to those nets. These tannin also improve the interlinking of fibers and the matrix in different woods and therefore, they are uh, largely used to enhance the, uh, the quality of the wood vis-a-vis -vis they also protect the wood from different kind of infections. In ceramic industries, these tannins are used to control the viscosity of the woods that is being used to, to make different kinds of ceramics and hence, they are largely used also used in ceramic industri uh, industry. 
in wine industry as we discussed that uh, they they uh, catechins are largely used in wine industry these tannin mole molecules help in uh, modulate or i will say enhance the flavor of different kinds of wines they are also used in anti corrosion uh, coating on the metals they or they are also used in 3d pr uh, printing processes in the industry so friends this was all about uh, tannins wherein we discuss about uh, how the term tannin was generated how the definition of tannin was evolved over the period of time what are the properties of uh, tannins uh, why the molecular weight of tannin is uh, so important or the molecular size of the tannin molecules are so important how they convert the animal skin into leather how these properties or their chemical composition or their chemical reactions help in classifying these uh, tannins into different classes what are their characters we also discussed different uh, examples of the plants which are rich in those specific tannins then we discussed how these uh, tannins are extracted from the plant matrix what are the factors that are important while uh, uh, important to consider while uh, extracting out tannins then we discussed the different chemical tests that are being utilized to check the presence or absence of tannins in the plant matrix and in then we discussed the uh, uses uh, both pharmaceutical or medicinal uses as well as the non pharmaceutical or the commercial uses of the tannins thank you